It's a beautiful day out there. Time to explore. Hello everybody. Why did I buy a cargo trailer, convert it to a camping trailer, and now go out boondocking? Yes, we like hiking, we like seeing nature, we like the solitude, the quiet, the restfulness. But the main reasons I did this, the main inspiration was I got so depressed during the recent election cycles and the things you see on social media of just the hatred, people being mean, that I knew that was not America. So I decided to do the cargo trailer, go out there and do what I'm calling the looking for America tour. Because I know most Americans are decent, hardworking, kind individuals. And sometimes we get lucky and find stories. This one came, we're boondocking in the Gila wilderness we were driving into Bayard um, to see a little park they had there, and we noticed this place called the Santa Rita Shrine as we did a turn in an intersection. Both Melody and I, oh, we have to stop there when we get back. And this is a story of perseverance. This is a story of faith. This is a story of hope. I'm going to tell you a story about the town of Santa Rita, uh, the mine that's there, the tragedies that, oh, that happened in this town, various ones, and to try to give you an idea of how the people persevered through no matter what hit them. And how and this is one of the things that is great about America. So I hope you come along for the journey on this video. And I'm just gonna start off with a little history of what I'm talking about here. Santa Rita today is a ghost town in Grant County in New Mexico. It's the site of the Chino Copper Mine. And Santa Rita was located about 15 miles east of Silver City, New Mexico. Copper mining in the area began late in the Spanish colonial period. But it was not until 1803 that Francisco Manuel Algua, a banker and businessman, founded the town of Santa Rita. He named it Santa Rita del Cobra after Saint Rita of Casquia and the existing mine. During the early 19th century, the mine produced over 6 million pounds of copper annually. The crudely smelted ore was shipped for further smelting and sent to Mexico City on muleback. The area was relatively peaceful, despite an occasional attack from the Warm Springs Band of the Chiricahua Apache, who lived nearby the headwaters of the Gila and Mimbres Rivers. In 1837, however, an American trader named John Johnson lured the Apaches to a gathering and then massacred them to sell their scalps for the bounty offered by the Mexican government. Johnson's massacre inflamed the Apaches rather than intimidated them. The rich Santa Rita copper mine in New Mexico was a principal target of Magus Coloradus and his followers. In 1838, 22 fur trappers were killed nearby and the Apaches severed the mine's supply line. The three to 400 inhabitants of Santa Rita fled southward to the Danos Presidio, 150 miles away, but the Apache killed nearly all of them en route. Afterwards, the Santa Rita mine was only occasionally in operation until 1873, when Apache Chief Cochise signed a peace agreement with the U.S. and the mine was reopened. Martin B. Hayes reopened the mine. However, the town continued to be subject to Apache attacks from Geronimo, Victorio, and other Apache war leaders until 1886. When Geronimo surrendered for the last time, a post office opened in 1881 and the coming of the railroad five years later spurred further development of the mine. 
After the Santa Rita mine was converted to an open pit in 1901, the town was forced to move several times as the pit grew. Shortly after the town relocated in 1957, heavy rains washed boulders and mud into the new town site. The town was abandoned once and for all in 1967, and the school system for the area was discontinued in 1972. Now I'd like to introduce you to Linda, who we met at the Membrys Cultural Heritage Museum. She's a local, and she can tell you a little bit more about the actions of the mine operators, their effects on the people of Santa Rita, and how the Santa Rita Shrine came about. So here's Linda. Um, Santa Rita was the uh, patron saint for the little community that is, was removed when the mine expanded. Um, the trying not to get too deep in the weeds here. Uh, when the mine decided it needed the property that the town of Santa Rita was built on, and it was a proper town, it had a hospital, a lot of kids were born there, um, but the mine owned the land and they decided they needed it for their tailings pile. So people were moved, and the statue in the church had to be removed. And she went to live at uh, the priest's house for a while. And then having difficulty in finding where to keep her, eventually the people of Santa Rita, and they still are kind of a unified group, um, decided to build the shrine to house their statue. So she built the shrine and it's there and I don't remember exactly what all it says. I think it just says basically that she's the patron saint for hopeless causes. Um, and there's quite a story in them building the shrine. But then about five, six years ago, I think it was, some vandals broke in to the shrine and busted up everything, including the statue. So people assumed that was the end of Santa Rita. But there's a gentleman in Baird who knows how to repair plaster. And so he took on the cause to rebuild the statue. And Thanks to his skill, uh, the statue was reinstated in the little shrine there. So she really is the patron saint for hopeless causes. Before I show you a little tour around the shrine, I just wanted to share a newspaper article I found about uh, the vandalism that took place there. And it goes like this. In the wake of a tragic incident of vandalism last year, a Hurley man is honoring the saint he believes answered his family's prayers. Cake decorator Manny Saborio offered to try to restore the St. Rita statue that was badly damaged when the Santa Rita shrine was vandalized last October. Saborio had asked St. Rita to come to the aid of a family member. She's considered the saint of the impossible, Saborio said. I asked her to grant me a blessing due to a surgery my cousin was going to have. My cousin had a tumor that was considered inoperable, too close to the heart and trachea. After the surgery, the doctor actually said it was really easy to take out and the tumor was really big. Talking about faith here. So, uh, that said, let me show you around the shrine. Well, we're just outside of Baird, New Mexico, and we drove, was driving and saw this Santa Rita shrine. So we thought, it sounds like it could be interesting and nice. 
Let's check it out. Oh, this is for the let me bring this down. The Grant County veterans killed in action in Vietnam. Uh, wow, this is so nice. That I assume Baird, the city of Baird did this. I'm almost speechless here. Take a quick walk around. Santa Rita Shrine, 1960. Kennecott Copper Corporation uh, notified the residents of the town of Santa Rita that they had to vacate the by 1972 to mining expansion, all houses, buildings, and the Santa Rita Catholic Church were either moved or demolished. The statue of St. Rita was taken to the village of Central. Miguel Ojenga, uh, Angel Alvarado, and Moy Gonzalez asked Kennecott officials for a section of land, and the statue was brought back with the blessing of the diocesan bishop of El Paso and the help of other Santa Rita residents, the shrine was built here. The former town of Santa Rita was located one mile east of this location. Hmm. It's one of the things I love about our travels is finding places like this. Just show them. I always call it the Looking for America tour that we're on. That. Most Americans are decent, kind people, and they get together and build something like this. And I don't know how well it's going to come out with me and the glare, but that's a statue of St. Rita, for which the town was named after. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it inspiring. We found this, the shrine, we weren't planning on going there, we were just taking a turn, saw it, and said, well, on the way back we're going to check this out. And I think it's a wonderful story. Here's the people that have lived through so much tragedy, but their faith has preserved them. And if you like this type of video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Melanie and I kind of go out of our way to find places like this. Sometimes it's accidental, sometimes it's just luck. And then we go down rabbit holes to find out all we can. So if you like these type of stories, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, give it a thumbs up hit the notification bell, leave comments. Um, I like to spread stories like this. And the more subscribers you have and the more likes, the more the YouTube algorithm spreads it. So hopefully you'll help me out on that one. And as I said, hope you enjoyed it and have a blessed day.